Yehovah Malak, Allah Malak, Malak. Yehovah Malak, Jami Rakis. Yehovah Gadala, Makari and Theos. Yehovah Adonai, Yehovah Elohim. Kurios Theos Panta Kreta, Kurios Theos Pistos. Elda at Yehovah, Yel Yamuna Yehovah. Evas Leon Kurios, Othios, O Panta Kreta. Baslios Baslion, Kai Kurios Kurion. Yehovah the Bar Halal, Elohim the Bar Halal. Yehovah Elohim, Gadol Gadol Geber. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion. Kurion, Nimohagion, Panta, Kreta, Gadol, Gadol, Gebra. Moraros, Nasa, Elohim, Elohim. Ilelai, Shalot, Yehovah, Malak. Yehovah, Malak, Jesus Christos, Gadol, Gadol, Gebra. Yehovah, Ishmalkam, Yehovah, Shamma. Yelna kum Yehova, Yelna kum Yapa. Netzak Israel, La Sheker, Gava, Gava. Triembos Yehova, Jesus Christos, Panta Kreta, Gadol, Gadol, Gebra. Zohan Logan, Ogar, Tautios. Dulas, Desmios, Despotes. Dikai Sune and Jesus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa, Banta, Greta, Gadol, Gadol, Gebra. Yehova Ihe Elohim. Yehova Ihe Elohim. Ilela Esholot. Yehova Malak. Jesus Christos, Gadol, Gadol, Geber. Derek, Emuna Bakar, Mishfat, Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh, El Elyon Elohim, is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of flat God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh, Sitkano to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them, who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique and well mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing we shall not profane the holy name of our Lord our God, but rather we shall fulfill the great desires of Lord God the Father through the holy manner walk of life in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, through the completed can of scripture, knowing the difference between the prophecy and the tongues, as many people have fallen to the ministry of tongues thinking that's the ministry for 
believers, but rather it was a sign for unbelievers. And looking upon that prophetic word after the completion of the canon of scripture, every believer has to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through the completed canon of scripture of the word of Lord God, what we have in our hands. And day by day learning that mind, proving the will of Lord God the Father, having a delight to live a life only for Christ, rather than living a life either like Matthias not chosen by Lord or Barabbas chosen by the category of the people on this earth over Christ our Lord. So dear brethren, every day is so precious for us in that every breath we bend under the controlling entering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost is still more precious for us because we are not here to profane in the name of my Lord, my God, my rock. But rather, we are here to see that the name of my Lord God is being held high, provided when we fulfill His palais desires on this earth. So, dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. And let's come back and continue what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date. In eternity past, to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of His word. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, once again coming boldly unto the grace of the Lord to know the truth. Humbly enough, O Lord, as a sinner, confession of our sins through rebound. Because, Lord, you love truth and righteousness in the inward parts of us. And when we are going to do the things which you have told for us in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then we are walking in truth, O Lord, and you desire us to be with you. Though we are walking with you, Lord, like the priests when they come to the labor to wash their hands and legs, we come once again, O Lord, unto the grace to confess our sins, so that the responsibility of our lives is to show to the world in the four colors representing with the four horns, that if we are not grown up into the power of the cherubim level of thinking, then surely we cannot represent you on this earth. Yet, O Lord, you have given us this grace to understand the color of amethyst, the color of purple, the color of scarlet, the, the color of fine linen being twisted over there with the needlework, so that every day we could come back and show to the world the garments of beauty and glory, so that, Lord, they can understand when we are grown up into Kramatias, that's our glory, when we are opening up our mouth to talk every word to be brought into captivity for Christ, that's the beauty. So, Father, in Malachi 3.16, O Lord, you have booked the book for us where they fear you, and I have written a name on that, they they fear upon you and talk about your terms. And being grateful and thankful for this, O Lord, we have been very much alive to understand the things which have given for us every day, your life every day, your breath every day, your grace. So Lord, help us not to use it in vain, but rather to edify the thinking of your word in our souls and represent truth, thus to become not to profane your name on this earth, but rather do the things that which are pleasing in the sight. So, Father, the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's day, and eternity past, as we study them, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by this message, which are prepared and kept for us on today's day, and eternity past. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name, we praise our Lord. Amen. In Ezekiel chapter 20, we have many lessons to learn, which quite obviously can prick our hearts to understand, are we really profaning the name of the Lord of God, or are we really making up our lives to please God the Father? In Ezekiel chapter 20, in verse number 9, he would say, But I wrought for my name's sake, that you shall not be polluted before the heathen. 
among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them, in bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. So here he says, For my name's sake I brought them out, because my name shall not be polluted among the heathen. The word polluted has a lot of weightage, dear brother, when it has been called in the Hebrew as kalal, C-H-A-L-A-L. And that meant to say, to defile, to profane, and to make common by violating the honor which belongs to Christ. And over here, if you can look further, you are simply wounding the name of my Christ because you are making the unbelievers to believe the things pertaining to tongues rather than making them to believe daily discipleship program in the prophecy work. In First Corinthians chapter 14 and 15, if you can look, he emphasizes the words to teach that I speak this for your shame because some men don't have the knowledge. In malice, be kids, but in understanding, be men. And he's repeatedly writing these things when we go back to that word. In First Corinthians chapter 14, after that great discourse pertaining to what the love can be in chapter number 13, he says that desire spiritual gifts, in that he would say that you may prophesy. And the word profane begins in your churches, in your lives, when you don't first build up a wall of fortification or wall of fortification against any teachings apart from discipleship program in your pulpits. The word kalal in the pictographical representation says, first build up a wall of fortification. Make these people to come to know what is discipleship program. Profane begins when you people don't teach daily the word of God. If anything that has been shot on this earth, the people don't understand who is Lord God of doctrine. As in the seventh word yesterday, many people might have preached in the Good Friday sermons. Into thy hands, O Lord, I dismiss my spirit, I give my spirit, and he says in Psalms 31, 5, O Lord, it is nothing but you called to be the Lord God of doctrine, the Lord God of truth. And when he's giving that, he's saying, Lord, the porteke word which has been used over there for the veil to put aside asunder, he says, Lord, you are my overseer now, you are my pakut. Therefore, into, into your hands, Lord, I am committing this spirit. And here we learn, profanity begins when you haven't been committed your life to the Lord God of doctrine. But the people are thinking, speaking in tongues or miracles or healings is enough so that you can think that you are not really profaning the name of my Lord God. After the completion of the canon of scripture, these temporary spiritual gifts have been halted. We have now only one thing he would show here in 1 Corinthians 14.1, prophesize, that meant to say what? Teaching, 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 day by day, so that you could become like mentors of the word of Lord God in Hebrews chapter 5 in verse 12 through 14, when he would say, looking upon the time, you should be communicators of Bible doctrine, therefore strong meat belongeth unto them, such people, where there is a constant study of exposition of the word of Lord God. Not for miracles, healings, or tongues. The greater you do miracles, healings, or tongues, you're profaning. If anything that which is lacking in the present Christendom in this earth is the teaching of the word of Lord God, you can just go back and look and analyze. Church buildings are best with all the equipments. People are looking for entertainments through singing songs. And if ever they need, they want to have the miracles or healings business for them. So the temporary elevation of the sufferings of them, which has been caused by neglecting the word of God, they think they can overrule that by having some positive affirmations repeated in the subconscious mind. And they think they can be healed. 
Anything you can find in the present 21st century is a lack of business for teaching of the word of Lord God in our pulpits. Therefore, we can understand the word profane, kalal, which meant to say there is no proper wall of fortification so that day by day the word of Lord God has to be taught in the principle of Lamad. From there on to get acquainted with Oida. From there on to erect a structure and represent Yare, the Christ mind. The three things haven't been done. There is no Lamath principle, discipleship program. There is no acquaintation with my Christ, becoming one with my Christ. And there is no erection of the structure to fulfill the demands of the word of Lord God as the word of Lord God demands for us every day. There is no erection of the structure of thought process of Bible doctrine for us. That's what you can look. Therefore, dear brethren, if there is anything that which is lacking in the present 21st century is what which has been gone day by day, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, carrera upon carrera, Bible teaching where it has to be from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. If we don't do that, if we don't make them to come to learn the word of Lord God every day in your pulpits, if they don't go chapter by chapter, verse by verse, line by line, book by book, and if needed, how Lord God, the Holy Ghost could guide them to complete the entire Bible day by day, even to learn single iota and carrier of the Bible. If you don't do that, if you don't do that, then you're profaning. Therefore, people will love for miracles, healings, tongues. People are just simply happy to enjoy their life in the terms of what we can be called as, or what they can look for as in simple words to say, that which could be for working out the things pertaining to temporary relief from the suffering that they're going through, but they're not able to understand, they're not able to fulfill the will of Lord God the Father, and thus among the heathen, the name of my Lord God is been blasphemed. In this 21st century, we're having well developed churches, as the churches are growing big, Satan also has a lot of plans to rise a false man who never come back to teach the word of Lord God in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. They never come for that. They never go to dig deep down and learn the word of Lord God in truth. Never they learn that. Never they make up the time to know that. And what for they have time now? Anything apart from edification of the word of Lord God in Anaginisco style or ice concept called to be isagogics, categories and exegetical word of God. Where there is no daily revolution of the word of Lord God being taught. You are profaning the name of my Lord. You have so many great deep things from the word of Lord God to be digged and taken out and given and taught. There are many, many great things in the word of Lord God which we need to look and dig and take and learn. But the wife has become like a trickerious wife that is called the church. And who is guiding the mind of the church? The so-called pastor teachers who are standing in the church pulpits but in return they haven't understood. Husband is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If it is his church, the teachings of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ should reign in them. And if the teachings of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ should reign in them, he said, Every day carry your cross and come and follow me. You know, people yesterday might have thought about many, many great things. To emphasize and to say, the first phrase what they spoke on the cross, forgiveness. The second phrase, salvation, the third phrase, consolation, the fourth phrase, agony and pain, the fifth phrase for thirst, the sixth phrase, accomplishment, the seventh phrase, victory. You know, that's what they want to make it up. But they don't understand. When Christ the Lord of God prayed for us on the cross, forgive them. Because of that prayer being answered, today we are saved in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, grace, which has done for us on the cross. So that what? You can be with the paradise of Revelation chapter 2 emphasizes the word paradise, what it is all about. 
in this chapter number 2 of verse number 11. We have many lessons to learn over here when he would say, To the one who cometh, or the one who overcometh the things pertaining to this, in the very, very first basic lesson which he teaches to the church at Ephesus. He goes on to say, I know thy works and thy labor, thy patience. You can't bear them which are evil, and you have tried them which say they are apostles, and they are not, and you have found them liars, and have borne and had patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have something against you because you have left the first love. What is the first love? Day by day teaching the word of Lord God. With the proper exegesis, isocox and categories, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, kera upon kera. That is the first love. So he said, remember, therefore, from when you have fallen and repent, change your mind, let no ear. Because the word have here been fallen, if you can look, it says to say as akpipto. And the word over here for akpipto, it meant to say like uh, vanity, because your body is not a discipleship program. Therefore, quite obviously, it becomes like a vanity. It becomes to speak that your blood is never for discipleship program. It becomes to such an extent that you would say the reasons are you have great pressure upon your head to make up your cares and anxieties of the lives, the worries of the lives, no proper foundation of the basic word of the first three, first parable of the three, three portions of the sower of the seed. So you give all reasons, but you don't have a fertile soil to know the word of Lord God. Therefore, dear brother, on the very first basic thing it would be, your body will never be discipleship program. The blood in your body will never be discipleship program. No matter what may be the pressure upon your head, he would say, I cannot come because the pressure is greater than and the grace of God which has given for us to see one more day and repent our ways of life and amend and change our ways of life and come back to the will of Lord God the Father. Therefore, he says over here the word akpipto. So he says, the first love which you have loved, and then he would say, remember from where you have fallen. The word over here, what we can call is akpipto, how you have fallen. First of all, the blood in your body is not supporting for discipleship program. You don't even understand your body should be for discipleship program. Therefore, what happens? You're going to profane. Though a chance of forgiveness has been given and a consolation of this great salvation has been given, you shall be with me in paradise. What you have to do? You have to come and eat the tree of life every day. Because you're going to be the Lord's wife tomorrow, not someone else's life. You're going to be Lord's wife. You cannot have your own life after you believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You don't have that life. The life has been changed. When you enter to look upon that paradise, your life has been changed. It is what he rules now. The tree of life, he says, therefore he says, remember from where you have fallen, what your body has been associated with, why the reason of your blood in your body I have given for you, and why you are giving me such stupid reasons to say you have a lot of pressure not to renovate your thinking as per the demands of the word of Lord God. So he says, what are these things? From where you have fallen, come back and look. What is the intention of your life? How have you been living? What's the thinking? How have I been thinking? So he said, from where you have fallen, akpipto. And then he would say, emphasizing that, repent, metanoia. The word metanoia, dear brethren, is nothing but to say, to be in the realm of your vigor and valor, what's your vigor and valor you have, build up a wall of fortification so that now the blood in your body can suck in nothing but the truth. That's repent. You know how to say that you have met a very close encounter with the death through accident or something. Wouldn't you be very careful now? By any means, you'll be very careful because you don't want to die. Likewise, repent meant to say now, 
the leftover energy in your body, the any energy levels what you have, strictly build up a wall of fortification. The Hebrew word nakam, you're talking in the pictographical representations. And then make sure in your blood, if at all you have that blood in your body, which has been operative, which has been making you all to think, and because that is nothing but life, as long as we are having on this earth, because first comes the natural and then the spiritual. The first comes the flesh and blood, and there it doesn't have flesh and blood which have a spirit. The first comes the living soul, the later we become the zopoe on the pneuma, living spirit, quickening spirit. So the same thing over here, the leftover blood, what does it do now? You're alive, isn't it? It should seek and suck nothing but the truth. That's what we read in Ecclesiastes 10.3. The heart of the wise one will be on the right side. It is called to be Yameen. Because his blood is alive only for one thing, to suck nothing but the truth. The fool's heart will be to the left side. Because it is so male. What does it do now? It allows to add once again pressure upon its blood. All the LF energy which has been given for it to become disciple for the word of Lord God. Since it has such sort of a pressure in it. Because it's not happy. Because it loves to say we'll be like fools. We'll become Cassie Eels. And who will be the Cassie Eel? Never they think upon their life should be grown up into grammatious program. No matter what may be the pressure in their life, they have to make up their body for discipleship program and grammatious program. They don't make it up. So they will be fools. Cassie Eel ones. So where their heart is, their heart to the left. So what they do, they love pressure. Anything that turns in their blood, they love pressure. And then what do they do now? Since they love to have that pressure, they will say we don't use our Allah energy to become disciple to Christ. But over here, when you find true repentance, Nakam, it meant to say what? First, the leftover energies in your body, the driving forces in your body, strictly come, build back a wall of fortification against what? Against the lies of this world, the profanity of this world. What the churches are practicing, if you can look, churches are practicing nothing but profanity today. They're far away from Kalal program. But Lord God the Father said, because of my name's sake, that shit shall not be defiled or polluted or profaned among the heathen, I'm going to sanctify it. So the wall of fortification, what it loved to develop, it says it should be for discipleship program. Today, the churches are living such sort of a profane life. They're not able to build up a wall of fortification against the daily rituals what they're looking. You know, the same thing what we can find that word in the book of Isaiah. When it says over there, emphasizing the point, daily they approach me. But they come to say as if they have heard the word of Lord God. In chapter 58 it is. In this great chapter of Isaiah 58, we have a lot many lessons to learn. The category of these people over here, what they do, he says, first of all, saying that, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression. The word transgression is called to be rebellion nature, pesha. Why it is rebellion nature? Whenever they open up their mouth, the thought process is not at all to the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. Therefore, it's a rebellion nature. So now he says, show to them that rebellion nature. And then he said to the house of Jacob, show their sins, chatta, the wall of fortification, what they have built up in their soul, so that they shall not learn the word of Lord God. And I will look the characters of them. He says unto them, They seek me daily, and they delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinances of their God. They ask me of the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. 
You know, these are the people they are doing every day without rituals, without reality. Every week coming to the church, rituals without reality. They're saying that we come to Darash, we come to make a diligent search. We make up to get every thought in our head to be renovated like Bible doctrine. And we come to make up the desire as the beloved Son of Christ, or Lord of God, the way how we did to God the Father. Even we are also coming to fulfill the delights and we love to know the word called to be get acquainted oida or yada so getting every thought into the viewpoint in our every way the word there are called to be the course of life so that the every thought process what we have in our head has been renovated to become like a grammatius to the lord of our god so they would say first of all we are seeking daily we are coming to delight to know the ways of the lord god and we are as a nation that do righteousness so the as they call holiness unto the Lord God. And then what does he say now? They forsook not the ordinances of Lord God because in their every viewpoint, they want to say they still further dig and take what is the wrong in their body. So they're going to come up like an ordinances, the mishfa, the judgments. So that ordinance of the Lord God and they ask of the ordinances of justice, again, the word sitkenu, and they take delight, that is again, the word capets, in approaching. The word approaching is called to be as Kereba, and the word meant to say to drawing near, that is from the rising of the sun till to the going of the sun, they would love to say the head has been renovated in their body as per the demands of the word of Lord God. And now what do they say? Wherefore have we fasted? And thou seest not, wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and you take us no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast you had pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, you fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. And he calls, is this such a fast? The word fast over here is nothing but your brethren putting pleasure upon their blood, called to be tasom. They're fasting to say, put pleasure upon their blood. So his Lord God the Father says, is such a fast that I have chosen. And he goes on to say, what sort of a fast? He says, a day for a man to afflict his soul is not to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him. Will thou call this a fast of acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that you break every oak? Use not the deal, the bread to the hungry, and thou shalt bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. When you see us the naked, you cover him and you hide not thyself from thy own flesh. You know, he's saying practical application of the word of Lord God over here. Because he said, if you do such a things when you're daily approaching to me, this is the repentance that I found in you, that I want in you. And today also people are saying weekly ones are going to the church. We'll celebrate Good Friday. Afterwards, we'll come back for the Easter. The sunrise early morning service we're going to do. Afterwards, we'll come back and talk about all these things. Is such a thing that Lord God the Father is needing? He says, no. I want the things that which could make others free, free from the bondage of sin of death. How by a holy manner walk of life, how it is possible until you go to make up a wall of fortification and day by day build up teaching the word of Lord God as grammatious program in your pulpits. Make them to join as disciples and grow them up into grammatias. That's what the will of Lord God the Father is all about. If you're not doing that on the face of the earth, you're profaning the name of my Lord God abundantly, dear brother. This is what it is happening day by day for us. Day by day, if you can look how much the name of my Lord God has been profaned. How many churches are profaning just Lord. They say we are seeking daily unto the Lord of a God. We are coming to do the delight of Lord of a God. But he says, I am not happy with that because you are not able to prove that in practical way of life. Today, people are coming to the church weekly once basis or monthly once basis or yearly once basis. But I'm not happy with your fear, which are showing towards me. But I want you all to be in the sense of becoming disciples to Christ. That's, that's when the name of my Lord God has not been blasphemed or profaned among the heathen. Therefore, he says to the church in Revelation chapter 2, to the church at Ephesus, when he's teaching them, he says for us to learn what sort of a mind of man these people could be. So he says over here, repent. 
First, know your status quo of Akpipto, from where you have fallen. Your body is not for discipleship program. The blood in it is not for discipleship program because you said it's a pressure to come back and look and learn the word of Lord God every day. Don't worry, you have fallen. Therefore, the solution is repent, nakam, make sure the leftover energies in your body, you build up a wall of fortification and make sure now your blood is going to suck nothing but the truth. You have been escaped from such sort of a great damage to your soul, then suck nothing but the truth. How can you sleep? If you are not sucking that day, the truth prescribed for you. Go back to the local church where I've been assigned with ask a pastor teacher to daily teach the passages for you from the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Don't compromise with your spiritual growth what Lord God the Father has intended for us in eternity past. Because you have to submit your spirit to Lord God of doctrine. The word over there when we look for God is 410. It's very interesting. It's not 430. And the word over there for 410, besides Yehovah, what he calls 3068 code for Lord. He says every human being now being involved by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, called to be the 410 as God. They can grow up to the process of 430 because the pastor teach a bona fide gift to teaching the word of Lord God. There is no way that he can give a chance to profane the name of my Lord God in the midst of such powers and crooked nation generations on this earth. There is no way you can have that. You cannot profane. You cannot have any reasons to say, I am in the form of a human flesh. No. So he says over here, you have to submit your spirit back to Lord God of truth, Lord God of doctrine. And this doctrine over here is our life, dear brethren. Therefore, we ask you to repent and make up your pulpits to be associated with making up your blood once again to suck nothing but the truth. That's the word repent is all about nakam, the leftover energies, the leftover things which have been there in your body, the age or whatsoever of thinking, what you can have in your mind. He says, straight the way first, Build up a wall of fortification. That's what you have been called. Get separated from the world. Don't drain in your thinking of the world. The thinking of the world will lead you to death. It is by the word of Lord God you have been healed. Not by the thinking of the world. Not by the expert advisors of your doctors who go to give you that. Dear brethren, you need to look. When he would say over here for us, repent, leftover things, what has been there in Aleph energy, first build up a wall of fortification so that now the blood can suck nothing but the truth. Your blood has to suck nothing but the truth, dear brethren. And people are not happy today to learn the word of Lord God because they are simply looking for the things pertaining to what we can look in First Corinthians chapter 14, miracles, healings, or tongues, rather than knowing the word of Lord God. Repentance leads to know the word of Lord God, dear brethren. The word over here, he said, desire, prophecy, that meant to say prophetio, which is nothing but dear brethren, to be like the one called to be Nabi'im. And the meaning and the work of the Nabi'im is to make sure that the vigor and valor in your body is being increased or strengthened. That's what Nabi'im does. He goes to give you strength to your thought process. And that's what you're going to renew your strength like eagles. As we read in Isaiah chapter 40, you'll be more ring than the angman who will vanish it. But since your foundation is found upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you have perfect peace. Shalom, shalom. In returning unto Lord God, that's what we read in Isaiah chapter 30. That's what we look over there for the word when he says, in Isaiah chapter 30, in verse number 14, it has to be, when you return unto the Lord God, what you shall have? He says in verse 15, For thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, and in returning, that meant to say, take a U-turn in a thought process towards in your body from the world into the Word of God, and rest. Again, the word rest is called to be the same work what the things pertaining to your process of repentance begins. That is to build up a wall of fortification.
in the leftover energy there in the repent you're going to make up your blood to suck the word of truth so he said rest and then you shall be saved you're going to meet your pastor teacher who's going to give you up every day the right word of lord god the thought process to be to the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. There is no place for profanity over there. He cannot give a chance for profanity. And today there are many, 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 many millions and trillions of churches in and around the world who are preaching profanity. I can count very few churches who are teaching daily the discipleship program. Or exactly following the word of Lord God. As the word of Lord God would say, come daily to learn the Lord's mind by taking up your cross, grow up into grammar yes. joining as disciples and return, go and make disciples of all the nations. There are very, very few people, very few people who can have that. Very few. Very few churches. Because the word over here, what he said, in returning, and if we can have that nakam kind of repentance. When you return, meant to say what, what the thought process should reign in your body. Not the viewpoint of men. Not the thinking of men. Not the rationalism or empiricism of the things pertaining to the men on this world. Not such thinking that should be in you now. The thinking of this world shall not be any longer in you now. So what you shall have now? You should have the thinking of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what your true life is. The thinking should be exactly the thinking of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what the word written, take a U-turn. What should reign in your mind? Every thought to captivity for Christ. If not, you're still profaning. How you are still profaning? You're making up your congregation not to know the exact content of the word of Lord God. Therefore, they profane. They think the thinking of the world is greater. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 and 26, we read. No sickness is among you when you follow Lord God, Jehovah Elohim is your only Lord, your God. None of them will be barren. You will not end up with the minimum days. He said you will fulfill all the days of your life designed by Lord God the Father on this earth. Exodus 15, 27, he said, To diligently, to hearken, you shall hearken the word of Lord God. Then no sicknesses will come upon you. The angel of the Lord God will encamp it around you. These verses are not just given for you to have a positive affirmation of inspiring thoughts, but it meant to say what Lord God the Father has proved that for those people who walked with Lord God in spirit and in truth all the days of their life from the standards of being under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to say, Lord, you are the only one that we return unto thee. You are the only one that are going to give us this great knowledge of truth. So they would say, our thought process in in our head has to be in our body has to be renovated as per your mind not for our thinking thought process as per your mind that's what you have been called the thought process which has to be as per the word of Lord God and nothing else than that Return meant to say your thought process should be changed. That's what the word repent. The word meta, no ear, meta, change, no ear, thinking. Change your thinking. Come to know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. After knowing Him, know His mind. Being taught by the bona fide, gifted male spiritual pastor teacher in your pulpits, not a female. She cannot come to acquaint herself with daily teaching of the word of Lord God. But nowadays ministers who are profaned the name of my Lord God to such an extent, they have more menstrual sickness than the woman. At least a woman can have three days or five days to the max in the month. But these morons who have been occupying themselves to be into the pulpits and say that these are pastor teachers for you, they think if they finish the sermon today on Sunday, next Sunday they will attend the church. The six days, these stupid people, they're going through what we can call as ministerial sickness. Maybe after six days they get purified themselves and they come to the church to preach again. Lord God the Father hasn't intended you to be like that. Now how much you're blaspheming the name of my Lord God by your stupid 
way of thinking to join in a church to become a pastor you think this is for survival of your belly or some sort of occupation to make up your money if you cannot do any work better make up your wife to become a prostitute or you become a male prostitute let she become a call girl you become a call boy you'll get enough money for that don't try to pollute the name of my Lord God. Don't try to do business with the word of my Lord God, saying that Lord God gave me a vision in the night. I can sing best so I can come back and make up miracles or tongues or healings or X, Y, Z, rather than teaching the accurate word of Lord God. Because the word prophesied to choose, it meant to say, be like Nabi'im. What does Nabi'im do? He goes to revitalize once again the vigorous valor that has been left over in your body that meant to say what repentance to learn the word of Lord God. That's what the real work of the Nabi'im were in the past. The real work what now the church pastor teachers have to do to preach out the prophetic word for you not to give some new sort of revolution but the taken from the old and new testament itself to come out to give something new as we read the word in Matthew 13 52 and making the people to understand that they're able to get every day something great and new in the standards of the Lord's mind like the image of Christ confirmed to them like the thinking of the master which has been given for them that's what you have to do that's what you have to make it up that's what you have to be over here not to be like that people who have been there to say a prophetic word we call upon your name we call upon that name we call upon this name all stupid trance sort of a business in their mind and above all, the women also trying to have authority over the men, thinking that they can be great preachers. These are cursed ones in the sight of Lord God, dear brethren. Anything that goes against the word of Lord God to be maintained in your pulpits, let she be a good oratory preacher or any idiotic preacher. A woman shall never have authority over the men, says the Bible. That's it. There ends the matter. Don't try to add anything. Therefore, he said, it is better for her to be saved in a birth pangs of a labor rather than to have authority over the men and go against the word of Lord God because it will be a great sin. That's what he compares over there in First Timothy and people are not happy with that. Let her be with shamefacedness and sobriety. People are not happy with that. And they think women can be preachers. Not at all, dear brethren. Don't go against the word of Lord God. Let it be very few people who will listen to the word of Lord God. It's enough rather than having millions of followers for you who go to disobey the word of Lord God. And you always understand broad way many people will go, narrow way many people will dare enough even to come because they don't understand the burden and the pain. Because many will try to think they can walk in the narrow way, but they can't, says the word of Lord God. But the broad way... The same thing when they would say, Lord, Lord, didn't we hear a word when he taught us in the streets? And Christ, the Lord of God, would say, I don't know who you are. Street is nothing but a broad road. They have not taught the word of Lord God in the church. Where they learn the word, they learn the word in the streets. That's the broad ways for you. The church is a ground and pillar of truth. And many women are still against the word of Lord God. They don't want to change. They can have authority over the women, they can have over the Sunday school children, but not over the men. The sad part is even the men are not happy to make up themselves to get well equipped because, first of all, they're not being given the bona fide gift. They think they have a vision and God spoke to them so they can become a pastors for you. That is the first thing what they think and do. And ultimately they think they have been driven by this power. And therefore they come up with the things pertaining to gimmicks or tricks, miracles, healings, profaning the name of Lord God to the core. The thirst of my Lord God that the earth shall be filled with the glory of Lord God, as he said, as I live, said the Lord God. There is no one to lay to their heart. But they are very happy to clear the thirst of their souls, the thirst of their flesh that which goes to cater in the, in the blood that is pumping in it. Don't worry, dear brethren. And Lord God didn't spare Moses. He's not going to spare you, neither me, when we go against the word of God. 
to fulfill the will of Lord God the Father, he did not spare his own son on the cross, then how much more you and me, when we go to dishonor the word of Lord God and say, Lord, yet you are with me. Lord, what a great ministry I have. Being a woman, I have been so many people to follow me. There are so many clucks who are listening to my words. Because profanity to the core. There can be very rare percentage of chances in this earth, in the present Christendom, if it were not by the great work of Lord God the Father to transform the things according to His will. You'll find hundred out of hundred percent people are profaning the name of my Lord. For sure, hundred out of hundred percent people are profaning the name of my Lord God because they haven't come up to build up a wall of fortification and train up every day for discipleship program in our pulpits. Day by day, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, carrier upon carrier, man in his old sin nature to know the good and evil as they thought in Genesis 1 or Genesis 3. Now this man knows the difference between the good and evil. The evil is known more than the good what he can learn. What evil he has learned. How to cheat Lord God, saying that, Lord, we have been coming unto you, like the way how we can read over here. In Isaiah chapter 58, in verse number 2, daily they are coming to seek and to understand what is there for them. Daily they are coming. Daily they are making up. But is this the fast I prefer? He says, no. If you daily come, what should be? You should learn the word of Lord God. You should grow to release the people who are in bondage. But what for you coming daily? To learn lies, isn't it? How is your life? Lies. How is your thinking? Absolute lies. How is your thought process? Absolute lies. What you're looking, how is your life? Just concentrate on it, you will understand. It is nothing but profanity followed by lies. Hundred out of hundred percent, there is no daily preaching of the word of Lord God in our pulpits today. Where it has to be day by day, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, carrera upon carrera, is gone out from the face of the earth. People are not at all happy to learn more things from the word of Lord God at all. If there is something that has to be taught, the church administration will stand against and say, you cannot go to preach more than one hour because the people are fed up. <laughs> because they want entertainment or edification. That's what, again, the word, what we can call profanity, like the way how ritually they appointed Matthias. Either they want to live their life like Matthias in, in, the, in the place of Judas Iscariot, appointed by men, not by God. But for Lord God, the twelfth apostle was Apostle Paul. But in, one, in Acts 1, they put the lots. It falls upon Matthias over Barsabbas. But it is now either Matthias or Barabbas, whom they choose over Christ. And these people, they say, we are really doing God's work. We are really doing great work. Not at all, dear brethren. Just look your eyes. Just look your face in the mirror of the word of Lord God. You will understand your eyes being blind yet, not being enlightened in the word of Lord God. Look upon your thinking in the mirror of the word of Lord God. You will understand how much you are profaning the truth of Christ. And the so-called ministers who are standing in the pulpits, they are so happy to engage themselves to say, if we would tell the truth, the denomination of us will kick us out. We can't talk the truth openly to the people. So what? Why for? And what for you have been surviving for the sake of your wife, the sake of your belly, the sake of your children? Really, dear brethren, what for you are living on the face of the earth? To please men or God. If you are here to please men, Apostle Paul said in Galatians 1, then he wouldn't have been the bond slave of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And what's your life for worth now? What are you pleasing now? Whom you want to think of to be pleased and happy by your life? If Lord God the Father is not happy by your life, then who can be happy on this earth? You need to accept the fact, know the reality, dear brethren. 
If Lord God the Father is not happy by the way that you're dealing with Lord God the Holy Spirit day by day, indwelling in you, breath by breath, residing in you, you're constantly going to grieve or squelch or wax or liar, resist to Lord God the Holy Spirit and live a life of a lie. And if Lord God the Father is not happy by that, then what's worth your life you're living for, for whom you want to please it up? Whom you want to impress? How much you want to fulfill the lustful patterns of your roles in nature? How much you want to make up to be the pride of life, to be number one priority for you? How much the lust of flesh? How much the lust of I? At the cost of profaning the name of my Lord God on the face of the earth. And you're still happy to profane his name. Because you're still far away from discipleship program. You're still far away. Where is your returning? Where is your resting? Where is your salvation? If you don't come to meet the pastor teacher who goes to teach the word of Lord God every day. And then how you have to get it up? He says in Isaiah chapter 13, verse number 15, saying that, In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. The word quietness over here has been called, your brethren, as shakat. The meaning of the word shakat meant to say undisturbed. Don't be disturbed. Enough of the evil you will have for that particular day as Christ the Lord of God said in Matthew chapter 6. You'll be having for particularly the enough of evil. So he says don't be disturbed from the process of what shakat. What happens to the shakat? He says tranquility of your soul. So what happens? Your thought process from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun should go to renovate your soul. For that cause he said don't be disturbed. Don't be disturbed by the thought at all. Be available to the Lord God and to his work. Don't be disturbed at all. So he said, in quietness and in confidence, the word confidence is called to be batak. The meaning of the word batak is nothing but your brethren, to put absolute security. How are we going to put absolute security? Now your body knows your soul has been renovating as per the word of Lord God. So let them be your ultimate reasoning in your mind by putting up a wall of fortification and say no to the world viewpoint or the human viewpoint and say yes only to the divine viewpoint. That's what your security is. For example, by stripes you have been healed as read many people yesterday by Isaiah chapter 53. How you are going to be healed? By his stripes. How? Because he has made with them peace. Covenant of peace. He has increased the number of your days. When? When you go to believe on it and you are going to work on it and you are going to do the things that which are pleasing to Lord God the Father, then only. When you commit your spirit to the Lord God of doctrine, that's when you are going to get it. So, dear brethren, when he says the word batak, to hold on, to cling on, how are we going to hold or cling on, cling on to that, what Lord God the Father has promised and given for us? You know, there is no God on the face of the earth that can give you such promises of the word of Lord God, what we find in the Bible called as Jehovah Elohim or Jesus Christos. There is no God on the face of the earth who could give such sort of a great promises because he is the only creator for us and we are his workmanship. We have to follow by obeying his promises. Cling on to that. Hold on to that. He said, none of the evil shall come unto you if you obey my words. Do it. You have guts to challenge his words, then do it in practical. Meditate upon his word day and night and see what the changes can happen in your life. Day and night give the time of 2 hours 40 minutes to Lord God the Father to be given in learning the word of Lord God, the pure word of Lord God from the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Try to look it and seek and search from the will of Lord God the Father. You see what a great happiness you will find. What a great joy you will find for it. And the people are simply thinking, those promises just given like that. You are partaking his divine nature now. We have much more than that, as Apostle, Apostle John could say. We have more than that, what you have tasted or touched him. You are more than that, saying the precious promises of the word of Lord God. Cling into that, hold on to that. How? When you fulfill the remaining part of it. 
The conditional clause, if, is been fulfilled, then the blessings will follow. Without fulfilling the conditional clause, if, how come the blessings will be followed? If you don't follow the word if, that's what we find in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14. If such and such clauses he has given, then these blessings will follow. People will forget the clauses. They simply want to follow, thinking that God will bless me in such a way, in that way. Dear brethren, you are really making up yourself a mess. Because people are not at all happy to know the truth. In Jeremiah 29, 11, the famous passage wrote, The people want a court, the plans which Lord God Father asked for you. <laughs> and they would say such and such stupid things. And people are simply happy for that. And they would say, God has a great plan for me. How? And when? When you return unto him with all of your heart, and search him with all of your mind, and know him with all of your spirit. But you're not returning, you're not searching, you're not knowing, you're not knocking to learn about him more. How could you depend upon those promises? You know, it's hard to say that without having a proper foundation, you're saying, I would love to build up the third floor of this house. You haven't put your proper foundation. It's not even worth for one floor. And you're asking to say, I will build the third floor. I'll build the fourth floor. You're absolute morons, dear brethren. Because you have been called to put, first of all, proper foundation, proper relationship to be established in the will of Lord God the Father first. First of all, try to have a proper relationship with the word of Lord God first. Build up your proper relationship with the promises which has been given. Try to obey that conditional clauses first. And then there is no need to remind to Lord God the Father to do the other things like we find the escrow officer, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the escrow blessings between us and God the Father. You obey this, you fulfill this, and Lord God the Father is going to give that to the grantor who has been there over there to Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is going to give to the grantee that is we when we fulfill the will of Lord God the Father according to his terms and conditions. There is no need to remind to Lord God the Father as you love to remind your friend or relative to say if he's supposed to give you some money, you go to give a call and ask him again saying that please remind please give us back the money you're going to remind him but with Christ the Lord of our God those reminding things are not needed you pass the test you fulfill the requirements of the word of Lord God he simply accounts for you your blessings and those blessings none of the world can pay for you which has been bought by the money on this earth people may think having a often in the realm of this husband and wife relationship or any relationship between the female and the male, if they can get acquainted four times in a month, they will have lesser misunderstanding and greater knowledge, deep knowledge about each other. That's what they will think. Less misunderstanding and great deep knowledge because they're acquainted together to each other in a month four times. And if you can look over here with the word of Lord God, if you're getting acquainted with him every day to know the understanding of the Lord's mind, and you fulfill the will of Lord God the Father, there is no need for you to ask, Lord, bless me with this, Lord, bless me with that. Your prayer will be only one thing, Lord, teach me right and true word all the days of my life. Make me to walk every day in the spirit of Lord God to understand and to learn great deep things of your mind which are recorded and kept for us in the Bible because all other things will be stupid. They will simply fall away the place where they have to fall. But every day you have something great to learn in the word of Lord God. Get acquainted with Christ. You will realize the importance of this word of Lord God, what Lord God the Father has intended for us. Rather than profaning his name, you will realize what is that absolute confidence which you're going to put. Absolute attack process we are going to put for Christ. So dear brethren, he said, your body and your soul will be built upon such doctrinal status. Therefore, he says, you're going to have 
that great shakath tranquility because your thought process from the rising of the sun till to the going of the sun is been renovated in your soul for the standards of bible doctrine if on the earth a male and female get acquainted four times in a month they're going to say they're going to have greater understanding or they're going to have less misunderstanding and greater knowledge about each other then how much more the word of Lord God should be when you're getting every breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and how much of a great tranquility you can find with the Lord God to say, in everything Lord God the Father has promised for us, He's going to do us good. That's what your great challenge should be in Christ. Your great thought process should be in Christ. Therefore, you're going to have absolute confidence. Your body and your soul, your wall of fortification will talk nothing but the truth. Therefore, it shall be your strength. The word called to be Gebura. The word strength over here is called to be the great might, the great valor. So what you're going to do now, you act a structure in your body to say that will be to the renovated thought process of Bible doctrine. That's what we read, the sevenfold of the Spirit in Isaiah chapter 11. That if you can understand, the first one is called to be fear. The second one is called to be the knowledge. The third one is called to be the Geburah strength. A man who is of a great strength and warrior like an authority in master. Such a great warrior he will become. That's what Christ, the Lord of God, gives a clue over here. First you return, return your thought process. Have your repentance, make it up to build up a wall of fortification so that the remaining things that which have been left over in your body, they could assign and talk nothing but the word of Lord God. For that you repent, for that you come back and return, and then you'll have your rest. The word called to be, the word over here for rest is called to be nakath. That meant to say what the vigor and valor which you have, you're going to now first stabilize and fortify the things. The things that which have been left over. You know, that's what you need to look and understand, the way how David prays, saying that, Lord, help me to count my days. Because he knows very well, now his days are very short. So he says, Lord, help me to count my days unto wisdom. And that's what we are lacking today, to count our days unto wisdom. The word nakat, rest is nothing but making to build up a wall of fortification to say, Lord, in your vigor and valor, I want nothing but the truth to be number one for me. Help me to stabilize according to the standards of your truth, O Lord. I require nothing apart from that, O Lord. So you can understand the word which has been said over here for us, saying that, First, you will, in returning, that is what you're going to become like a thought process in your body to be changed from the viewpoint of men to the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. Today, much of the thinking, if you can just look and analyze and understand, the men's thought are nothing but purely the thinking of the world. They read some article, nowadays you have great many things in a smartphone to go back and grab in the information in the Google or XYZ. There is nothing that you can't get on the earth in the Google information. But you will not get the word of Lord God accurately being taught in the exegetical standards of pictographical representations of the Lord's mind. Except Lord God the Father could reveal that to the person to whom that gift has been given. And if it's been posting, people may search it. And Lord God the Father can give that for them if they have been found fit. And you may say how it is because you should have that great zeal and desire to know the truth. You should pass your test in understanding the truth. Not all can get that. Not all can read the Bible and tell to you the things what the Word of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, intends for us to teach. They may be well qualified in the terms of this world, but not qualified in the terms of neological training in the presence of Lord God the Father. There is no KT, ni tongue theology with them. So, dear brother, and he says, in returning first, make sure thought process into the viewpoint of Bible doctrine in your body, and having your word rest, nakat, the vigor and valor of what you can go to look, to build up a wall of fortification in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, nakat. So, dear brother, and he says, first, in your vigor and valor, build up a wall of fortification. So, in returning and in rest, he said, you shall be saved. 
that is having a thought process into the viewpoint like the great pastor teacher lord and savior jesus christ the one who's going to have that work of shepherd is going to deliver he is going to make up to learn the word of lord god that's what in returning and in rest you shall find in returning and in rest all the time you're going to find nothing but the word of lord god for you that's what your life has to be dear brethren in returning and in rest you shall be saved having in your body to say you're going to look up on the thought process of the word of lord god having to say in your rest the vigor and valor which has been left over to me now i'm going to build up a wall of fortification against the against the stupid human view point of life and then i'm going to be saved and that's what the thing is over here you're going to be saved because you're going to meet the right pastor to teach for you to teach the word of lord god His emphasis will be only one thing do not profane the name of my lord god on the face of the earth but rather edify them that's how we're going to be saved he said and then in quietness having shakat tranquility your thought process from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun what does it make it makes your soul to be occupied with christ your human view point what so you can have in your soul earlier it was it will change now to divine view point your mentality will be thinking word of god your volition will be thinking upon word of god your emotion will be appreciating the word of lord god your consciousness will be to the word of lord god your norms and standards will be nothing but the word of lord god that's what how your volitions will be changed your human view point will be changed and from there on what your soul is going to say now when i have christ with me who can be against me or whom i need if christ be for us who can be against us occupied with christ conforming to the image of christ is a real goal of what i have been sustained on the face of the earth then whom else i require to be satisfied on the face of the earth or whom else i want on the face of the earth I require none apart from the word of Lord God for me. That's what your life has to be: shakat, tranquility of your soul. Though she may be a treacherous wife or treacherous husband, you have Christ for you. It's enough. The word treacherous wife. What does she do? She departs from her husband. Don't depart from the word of Lord God. The word of Lord God is your life. Without that, you have nothing on this earth to really enjoy. When you have the word of Lord God, you have everything for you. People don't understand about these things, and they think they're really happy. No, dear brother, you cannot be. So he says, in tranquility and in confidence, that is putting your secure trust in the word of Lord God. He said, "You're going to have your Gebura strength, the third fold of the spirit. From there on, you're going to become the fourth fold, called to be acquainted with Christ, understanding. And then you're going to have the counsel. And then you're going to be the wisdom. And then you're going to get furthermore the spirit of the Lord God. The fourth one will be counsel. The fifth one will be understanding. The sixth one will be the wisdom, isn't it?" So dear brother and he said gebura strength you will have but he said you are not going to return there but you would not the word would not meant to say call to be as aba a b a h you are not yielding it you are not desiring it you are not willing into it you are not acquiescent with it you are not breathing after it You know what a great pain it would be for Christ when you look upon these words. You are not acquainted with it. You are not breathing it. You are not looking into it. And he said further, but you said no. We will flee upon horses. Therefore, you shall flee, and we will ride upon the swift. Therefore, shall they that pursue you be swift. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one. At the rebuke of five, you shall flee. 
till you be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain or as an ensign on a hill. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you and therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you for the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all that they wait for him. The word chaka meant to say to be looking upon for the Lord God or longing upon for the Lord God. How they become chaka? It is nothing but they build up a wall of fortification and they grow up into grammatious program. For the people shall dwell in Zion a judge flame. You shall weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of the cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. You know these things when he said, I want you all to be returning and rest and you shall be saved. I want you all to be quietness and in confidence have your strength. But you are not desiring for it. You are not intending for it. And you say we go upon horses. And you say we will be riding upon the swift horses. He said 1000 will flee at one. And then he would say, emphasizing that at the rebuke of fire you shall fall off. That is the entire nation referring over there. Why? Because they haven't returned unto Christ. They haven't rested in Christ. They haven't been saved in Christ. They haven't been looking upon quietness and in confidence in Christ. But in returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. But you are not desiring for it. What a great shame it is for us to look when these people are not able to become, to wait upon the Lord God as Shaka. The word Shaka is nothing but building up a wall of fortification to grow up into grammatias. Therefore he said, the people who are going to be, they have to be in the process of becoming Nabi'im word. Every word which has to be in your vigor and valor should, to, should go to renovate the thought process in your body as per the demands of the word of Lord God. That's what you have been called to be Nabi Aim. But many people are not happy to become Nabi Aim in the Lord. They're not at all happy for that. They're not even able to look upon that, to be the Nabi Aim process of the Lord of God. Because they want miracles, healings, tongues, and they want to still profane the name of my Lord. We can completely assure, as the word could say in Isaiah 13, verse number 15, they would not, they're not able to desire Abba. The same thing today, people out of 100%, 100% of the people are still looking for profaning the name of my Lord God, including the so-called past teachers in our pulpits. And how they're profaning and why they're profaning. The logic being very simple behind that. They don't want to build up their life for discipleship program in Christ. It's a great pain for us to look. Though the word of Lord God repeatedly says, be disciples for the Lord's mind. They're never happy to be disciples for the word of Lord God. Though they're called to be the priests wearing up glory and beauty garments. Never they want to become a grammatious program to be sealed upon their forehead that they belong to Christ. Never they want to open their mouth to talk to be renovated as per the demands of the word of Lord God. We are not here to dobby with untempered mortar to say good about you. Just look yourself into the mirror of the word of Lord God and where you are standing because the time is short, the days are revealed to the core. You may think you may come back to look tomorrow and understand the things now. Today is the day of the time for you to look upon the salvation of the word of Lord God. Don't profane the name of my Lord God. You need to pay the price for it. You may think the things will pass by. He did not spare Moses. Far less you and I can think we can be spared. Because we made a pass by. Not at all. Every word, every single iota and carrier of the word of Lord God has to be taught. That's what you have been called to be taught. And if you don't go to learn the mind of Christ every day being taught by the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher who has to be a male believer, then those churches are where the present Christendom has been running in the terms of such life. You are not doing anything but profaning the name of my Lord. 
enemy is very happy by your presence on this earth, serving in such and such ministries, rather than to come and serve the truth in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, dear brethren, only for the sake of this life you want to believe my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then he said, you are the men of most miserable. Only for the sake of this life you want to just believe upon my Lord. We are not here for that. We are here for something more. Because when the unlearned, called to be idiotes category of the people, when they come over here, the one who doesn't have professional knowledge, the unlearned called to be idiotus, as the word could show here in 1 Corinthians 14.23, saying, If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come the one who is unlearned, or unbeliever, he uses the word now, the first unlearned, what is meant to say? These are the people called as idiotes. And who are these idiots? In simple words, he would say, the people who are not having a proper dwelling place. The body is not a proper dwelling place in the authority of the word of Lord God for Christ. It's a far away from becoming their home, their body, to be the dwelling place of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The people who go for such doctrines, for such miracles, for healings of tongues, the word of Lord God called these are idiots. After the completion of the canon of scripture, they should look for learning the word of God, the leftover strength in their body to be renovated, to build up a wall of fortification for the doctrine of the Lord's mind. That's what you have been called over here. But what you're looking over here, you're becoming like idiots, he said. They don't have a habitation for Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Why? Their body is not having the authority of the Lord God in them. Their body doesn't have that authority. So, dear brethren, you need to look. This authority, which they don't have today in the pulpits, these are idiots. The body doesn't have the authority of the word of Lord God. The body doesn't have the authority of the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher. Even for the Old Testament, when you look in Exodus chapter 28, he would say, when they wear these garments and they come, then only they can minister me before my presence because they are going to bear the iniquity of the people and let them not bear their own iniquity. Therefore, let them come with the rules and regulations of the trust what I have given for them to obey it. In Exodus 28, he said, then only they can become a sharat oriented ministers. That is, in the thought process, in their heritage has been renovated, will be with the authority of the word of Lord God in them. You're not a sharat oriented minister today. We know that very well. Therefore, what you're going to become, you're going to become an idiot. Because your body doesn't have the authority of Christ being sealed in you. So that you can become that sharat oriented minister. Many people don't understand about these things which have been said for the word sharat. When we look over here, when he would say, emphasizing that these people, when they come, they're going to minister. How they're going to minister? He said the word sharat. The meaning of the word sharat is nothing but in their thought process, which has to be renovated, will be with authority. But the idiots don't have that authority. So therefore, these idiots or the unbelievers, when they come... He says, how can they say, saying that amen for the things which have been taught? So the thing over here he says, when they have been come, when these people they are speaking in tongues about these unlearned and unbelievers, will they not say, the unbelieving men to say, ah, pistos, the people who don't have proper doctrine over there to understand the Lord's mind, so these are called to be as ah, pistos. They will say, are these people not mad? The word mad over here, dear brethren, it has been called as meanomia.'" 
or the word called to be as mian nomai and the word over here meant to say the one who speaks the one who so speaks that he seems not to be right in his right mind so he is a mad one like the way how they called lord and, the, the way how they called apostle peter and even they called about lord and savior jesus christ their brothers and sisters they say he is mad he is out of his mind because this body will never be appreciated for discipleship program at the first hand and second one they will be far away to erect a structure to build up the thought process as per the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. So when these both things are not happening, the first thing, the body is not happy for discipleship program. And second thing, when the thought process is not being erected to the viewpoint of Bible doctrine, so it caused these are mad ones. When we're talking and telling them to erect a structure to the discipleship program, to the viewpoint of Bible doctrine, so that their every thought should be discipleship program, when they don't do that, you know, when we're telling them you do that, they call us mad. So what? Be happy for that if they call you mad. But here he said, these unbelievers and the unlearned people, idiotic ones, they will say, are they not mad? But if all prophesies and they come to that one that believeth not, or the one, again, he uses the word unlearned. The word unlearned over here, dear brethren, it has been called as that category of the people who don't have professional knowledge in the word of Lord God. The professional knowledge includes what every believer has to confirm to the image of Christ by growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine to be confirmed to the Lord's mind. They don't have this professional knowledge, he said. And what is that professional knowledge they have to be occupied with? That is to daily learn the word of Lord God. So he would say, if they, if all prophesies and there come unto him the one who believeth not unbeliever and the one who is idiot... He's convinced. He's been clearly making up the things to say, aglanko, to reprove with reproof. So he's going to decide, he's going to judge, he's going to look. That the grammatious program in the wall of fortification is the right thing. And now he's convinced of all, he's judged of all. The word judged over here is called to be anacrino. And the meaning of the word anacrino is nothing but your brethren. He's been examined, he's been searching from the from rising of the sun till the going of the sun, building up a wall of fortification, what thought process could be in their head. He's looking and thinking on that. That's what he says. He's searching for that. And then he said, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifested. Not to just say the way how the people will stand and the Pentecostal crowds calling someone's name and say, you're having this in your heart, you're having that in your heart, all stupid stuffs. Because already they send a request. For example, in my country, India, you can call the Jesus Calls Ministry. And from each and every place, they would write for money order, mentioning the problems of them. And for example, in any one of the state of the in any one of the state, you want to go to that particular place. And now, what does he do? He makes them to get back all those letters from that place which came there. That's what he goes to segregate that. And now he takes up those names and their uh, requirements. And now he goes to talk upon there because this man was a very big fraud who doesn't know the word of God. He says that he has seen visions and he has seen some of the things which are coming out of the Jonah fish. You know, all the stupid stuff. There are many stupid people in India who are listening to such stuff and they are yet believing them. And now he goes to that place. He calls the name of those people because already has scanned through that money order copies which was there earlier in the Indian postal system. And I calls that name. And they think he's really a prophetic one. And they say, you're having such and such problem. Come forward. And they'll be shocked to know how could he know about my problem. Already he has mentioned that problem in the money orders. And they think they're really making you to know the secrets of his heart. This is not the word over here. When we find in 1 Corinthians 14, 24 and 25, he said the secrets of his heart is nothing but your brethren, what they have to be in the process of becoming a grammatious program, what they have to be to build up a wall of fortification in the grammatious program, and what they have to make up to judge themselves and understand how much far they are from the reality of building up a wall of fortification to renovate 
forward their thinking from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun. That's what they're very, very far away from that. That they don't look. And now they say the secrets of his heart have been made manifested and so falling down on his face he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. You know, that's what every idiotic person and unbeliever should come to know the truth not that he has told the secrets of your heart the word secret over here dear brethren it has been called as that which has been hidden what has been hidden the soul which has been demanding in its blood to do it that which has been called for you all with authority to get out of the pressure which has been constantly upon your head the pressure which could be constantly upon your head with authority you have to get out. That's the secret. Because you'll be constantly having a lot of pressures upon your mind. So he said, that's the secret which you have to come out. And the word heart over here, cardio, the lab is nothing but his body has been designed to be for discipleship program, nothing else than that. So he said the secrets of his heart and what they have been made, they have been made to be manifested for The meaning of the word for is nothing but naked exposition of the truth because their viewpoint should be all the time discipleship program. So what does he do now? He piptoes, he falls down. How does he fall down? He casts himself down and he says the entire vigor and valor of my mouth, what God the Father has given in my body, through my mouth I accept the fact to say, I should simply become a disciple to the Lord my God. So what does he do now? He falls down to his face. Again, the word pros upon, which is nothing but to the panim called to be the vigor and valor of his mouth, which he goes to talk. And then he will worship the word pros kune, to bow down and to kiss. And the word shakak is nothing but your brethren. He would say, now I will renovate my thought process by building up a wall of fortification as per the demands of the word of Lord God. He will worship God and report apagaleo to go and say further the word called to be nageed which is nothing but in his vigor and valor what is erected in the structure to get every thought into captivity for Christ he goes to report saying that Lord God is in them because of a truth and what is the truth again over here dear brethren it has been called as the word could say for surely for surely my blood has started to suck the truth in the word of Lord God thus you have to be edified to the proper teaching of the Lord's mind. So this idiot who is not occupied with professional knowledge, accurate knowledge, your teaching but not accurate knowledge of the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic with proper exegesis. So he calls your idiots. So dear brethren, he says, How it is then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revolution, hath a interpretation. Let all things be done for what? For edification. The word edification is nothing but dear brethren, once again making up a place in your body to be renovated as per the word of Lord God, so that you can go to build up the structure of your vigor and valor to the terms what we can call as the word mibna, which is nothing but to make Make up you all to be well qualified for the word of Lord God. Therefore he says further, if anyone has a tongue, let him have an interpreter. The one who goes to be interpreter is the one who makes them to understand the thought process which has to be saying that he has to explain the words, expound, interpret, so that they have been making up to the process of this foreign languages and what they do with authority in their head so that the erected structure in their blood should teach that we have understood it we have acquainted with it so if there is no interpreter for it then he said better shut your mouth and we are talking this before the completion of the canon scripture today in the present christendom to profane the name of my lord god Tongues, miracles and healings, the temporary spiritual gifts, including the apostleship and the prophetic things, what they're going to do is absolutely banned when the word of Lord God has been completed for us. And today we are in the post canon, which is called to be the completed canon of scripture and the pastor teacher gift and the work of evangelism. These are the both things followed by the gift of helps and administrations, what we're going to have. And in that pastor teacher gift, it's steady to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed but rightly dividing the word of truth and the work of evangelism outside of the church to teach them proper doctrine. How come an idiot can say that he is believing Lord God? The secrets of his heart have been made known only when he comes to look upon 
the great truth of the word of Lord God when he's acquainted with the professional knowledge and that professional knowledge is not acquainted if you're not able to get every day to take up your cross and come back and learn the Lord's mind being taught every day. If you're not acquainted with that, you're not acquainted with the professional knowledge. He cannot come to know the secrets of his heart, not that something has been hidden. The secrets of his heart is nothing but that his body should be discipleship program and he has to learn more by growing up into grammatious program by building up a wall of fortification according to the standards of the Lord's mind. That's how the secret of his heart would be there for us. But today many people are not happy for knowing the secrets of the heart of the word of Lord God. And what they say, like the movie Trance, what we look, and the example of Paul Dinakran, what we told. People are saying to say, we know the secrets of your heart as if Elisha, when he said about Gehazi in the case of Nama, that my heart was not there with you, that's what they tell. <laughs> an unbeliever or a fool called to be an idiot, an unlearned idiotist, the Greek word, who is not acquainted with the professional knowledge, he would come back when with the right prophetical word being taught, the remata declaration of Bible doctrine. He would realize and say, this I don't know. Therefore, I have to come back and look and learn the Lord's mind accurately for me. And therefore, once again, I have to dedicate my life to know the word of truth. Thus is the way he's going to worship in the process called to be proskune, which is nothing but to bow down in the sense of making his thought process to build up like a wall of fortification in the truth. And he goes to report the word apageleo, which is nothing but nagad, the word meant to say, if he doesn't go and tell to others, there is nothing or anyone who can come to know about that. So what does he do now? He goes to make up his vigor and valor to erect a structure to get every thought into captivity for Christ. And then he would acknowledge that yes, this is the truth. The word on toss, which is nothing but over here, dear brethren, to say for surely the, the very sole purpose of my body is nothing but to grab in and take in the word of Lord God so that the purpose of my blood should make me to grow up into grammatias and in return make my vigor and valor to be the disciple of my Christ. That's what he would acknowledge and say this is the truth. On toss, the word what we can find is called to be in the Hebrew, the first one, Omnan, for sure, the blood has to suck the truth. And the second word called to be Yak, the strong code number 389 in the Hebrew, which is meant to say that it has to be for sure, grammatious program in its vigor and valor. That's what you have been called over here, dear brethren. And yet... Many people are still following the idiotic method and profaning the name of my Lord God, coming to tell weekly once in the church, monthly once in the Lord's table, though every day I have to partake in the Lord's table till he could come here to propagate about his dying and living. And yet, you have to look and understand how many of the people are still propagating lies over truth by making them to come yearly once to the church for Christmas or Resurrection Day called to be Easter for them commonly. They are more idiot. They are not believers. These are not unlearned. Not called to be our grammatias, but these are the people called to be our idiotes without having professional knowledge in the word of God. And he said, this I speak for your shame because you don't have that knowledge. Because of that you're thinking only the life on this earth is more important for you than anything else on this earth. They're called to learn the Lord's mind every day, dear brother, and don't profane, don't pollute. When next, in Ezekiel chapter 20, when we read those words, they are profaning my name, Kalal, the word. The wall of fortification of them is not at all for discipleship program. And today there are many Christians on the face of the earth who are not at all using the discipleship program to be number one priority for the law. And that simply they are profaning the name of my Lord God for many, many stupid things. Many stupid things. 
and yet they are thinking they can make my Lord God to be happy. Yeah, dear brethren, in returning and rest you will be saved. In tranquility shakat and batak confidence you will have your strength. And it is still say no to the word of Lord God. How can you be strength? But he said you are not desiring that. The reason why you are not desiring it? You don't love my law. That's the very simple logic. If a woman truly loves a man, she would not do the things that which are not pleasant to that man. She would completely subject herself to please a man and her man alone. You don't love my Lord God alone, you love your flesh too. Therefore you are pleasing two masters. You are slave to your flesh. You are acting that you can be slave to your master. Called to be Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ who reigns in you. And dear, dear brethren, Lord God the Father comes up with grace to give you one more chance, one more day to understand the Lord's mind and his thinking. And yet, how many days more do you still want to reject the truth and profane the name of my Lord? If you truly obey to love my Lord God, don't profane the name of my Lord God. If there is anything lacking in our pulpits today, it's daily teaching of the word of Lord God, daily exegesis of my teaching to be more specific. That should be the only thing which has to be in our pulpits today. And if people are not happy for that, who could be there? For you to be there in the heaven to say they were not happy. Because Lord God the Father should be happy with me love. What man can be happy? Because man has a heart which is desperately wicked and sick. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short. And the responsibility laid on upon our shoulders is too large. And which way you want to go, you decide. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leads us to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So, with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In our ability to link to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the grace must to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, where we teach shall learn to apply to us to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to care so thorn lagan. Herald the word in season out of sin, because the time out from my witnesses where it have been called. The number one time out from my witnesses in building Trinity for the Bible in our hands. And number two, I'm out from my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic course will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide it's your life. You still want to profane and defile the name of my Lord God and not become oriented to the discipleship program in the Lord God. You think and you do upon it. But we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leads us to the praise of His glory in crying out the pain of my Lord like a donkey through our voice. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, being grateful and thankful for this great privilege, O Lord, to understand the mind, knowing the pain of your heart, O Lord. 
We really don't have guts to further breathe on this earth, O oh Lord, if it were not by your grace to understand and to make a complete surrender, to repent ourselves, and to make up to come back to look the first love, by letting know to understand the remaining parts of the things which have been so active, to build up a wall of fortification, and make up the discipleship program to be first in the list of your calling. If it were not so, Lord, we have nothing on this earth, O oh Lord, to cherish or nourish and to make up to use this breath. But at our Father, you have given us this grace to realize your mind. And as we come once again, boldly unto the throne of grace, O oh Lord, to have your grace upon us. Sanctify us to the truth. Help us to know your mind. And help us to better serve you in spirit and in truth. By making complete body, soul and spirit subjected to you for your sanctification alone. In Christ's matchless, pure, gracious name we pray, Father. The Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to guide him and challenge and bless us by this message. So that, Lord, every believer could know that we are not able to profane thee any longer. We have no guts to sin. As you said, we have your sperma in us. And we have to look up to know greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. And yet, why we need to live a life of Lord which is unpleasing to thee. Help us to completely surrender for you and make up our lives to serve thee, to be that great pleasure of yours, to do that which you demand to be of fast and to do that which is pleasing to you in your presence. Once again, committing unto the mighty hands of Lord each and everything, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge and to bless us by this message which are given for us on today's day, eternity past, so that, Lord, it could stand firm for the generations to come as well, to realize and to understand that we are the repairers of the breach. In Christ's mind, fill us, pure, us, gracious name, we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Ghost, turn it on and challenge and bless us as the way the burden of Apostle Paul and Moses was. Help us, O oh Lord, to understand the burden of your word more accurately in making others also to come back and look and learn to take up the cross and make up this life worthy for only your glory in this earth. In Christ's matchless, pure, gracious name, we pray, sovereign Lord, the Lord God, the Holy Ghost, enlighten us and challenge and bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, sovereign Lord. Amen.